Just as God designed the incredible wonders of the universe, he also designed the perfect way for us to eat for health and for a long and fruitful life. This series of teachings on eating God's way for health and weight loss was inspired by God showing me different aspects of his eating plan for us. Each post will be on a different topic, but at the end, you will get an opportunity to hear how I learned God's eating plan. It shares what inspired me and what I learned about this topic. If you have not heard this, please take the time to listen. How healthy is sugar in all of its forms? Did you know that sugar is highly addictive? This is because it stimulates the pleasure centers of the brain, just like cocaine and heroin. It elevates blood sugar quickly, which results in a burst of energy. However, blood sugar quickly falls, so you then need more sugar. In America, sugar is associated with memorable events, birthday parties, holidays, snacks, celebrations, and to top off a good meal. There is pressure to eat sugary foods and drinks with everyone else. Also, many breakfast items are covered with sugar or made with sugar. Most processed food contains sugar in the form of high fructose corn syrup, as manufacturers know that people like the taste. Many American restaurants display cakes, pies, brownies, and other sweet delicacies in glass cases or on dessert trays. Soft drinks and juices contain massive amounts of sugar. In fact, according to a 2013 National Geographic article called Sugar Love, the average American consumed 22 teaspoons of sugar a day. By 2022, the amount is 34 teaspoons a day. What is regular table sugar composed of? Equal amounts of glucose and fructose. Surely, fructose is not that bad because, after all, It is in natural fruits. But can you have too much of it? In the fresh fruits God provides, fructose levels are low. However, fruit juices multiply the amount of fructose per serving. How many oranges do you think it takes to make one 8-ounce glass of orange juice? Four whole oranges. Many juice manufacturers claim no sugar is added but the fructose in juice is elevated naturally. Berries contain less fructose than other fruits. Tropical fruits tend to have the most. According to Dr. Richard Johnson, nephrologist, fructose is processed primarily in the liver. If you eat too much, it causes your liver to break down fructose to produce fats called triglycerides. Over time, blood pressure goes up and tissues become more resistant to insulin. Then the pancreas pours out more insulin. Eventually, this results in obesity, especially around the waist. America is the top country among the large nations in terms of obesity rates for adults. The presence of obesity tripled worldwide between 1975 and 2016. Sugar can also lead to various illnesses such as type 2 diabetes and heart attacks. According to Dr. Johnson, excessive sugar isn't just empty calories, but it is toxic. In agreement, Dr. Robert Lustig states, sugar is poison by itself when consumed in high doses. The Bible says nothing about sugar per se, as sugar was not produced in Israel at that time. It was not processed into powder anywhere until 500 A.D. Columbus planted the New World's first sugarcane in Hispaniola. It spread from there to other tropical islands. Scripture only mentions one kind of sweet item, honey. Of course, though sweet, it is made naturally by bees. It has various benefits, such as fighting allergies, boosting energy without increasing blood sugar levels, aids sleep, and can treat coughs. 
However, two scriptures in Proverbs warn against too much honey, as it can actually make you vomit. Fortunately, God provided the perfect dessert by giving us fruit, which have low amounts of fructose. The book of Daniel gives us a comparison between youth eating the king of Babylon's rich food and wine and Daniel and his friends eating vegetables and drinking water. The vegetable eaters, after 10 days, looked healthy and more nourished. An example of a family who did not eat any sugary items was told to me by my husband about our male lady. As her children grew older, they were offered sugary treats at their friends' homes. Guess what? They didn't like them. This is similar to my Vietnamese male technician mentioned in the last post on wheat and grains. She told me she doesn't like sweets except for a little honey, not even chocolate. Americans have been raised on sugar-sweetened food, fruit juices and sodas, sweet desserts and candy. However, small amounts of dark chocolate have several beneficial effects if you eat 85% or over cacao, therefore giving you less sugar and more nutrition. What about artificial sweeteners so you can retain the sweet taste? The following significant side effects are noted in research. Headache, depression, increased risk of cancer and weight gain due to increased appetite as well as impacts on gut health, increased diabetes risk, cardiovascular disease, stroke, dementia, and memory loss. Thus, we can see why God didn't design artificial sweeteners. Therefore, if you want to be healthy and slim, don't eat or drink them. Now I will share my story regarding sugar addiction. My first memory of of an addiction was as a teenager. I would eat multiple cookies after school. At Christmas, there were always cookies, fruit cake, candy canes, along with sweet cocoa, or fruit punch containing ice cream or sherbet. Rather than teaching me to cook, my mother taught me to bake cakes, pies, and cookies. Also, there was that trick-or-treat loads of candy. Sugar addiction never occurred to my family or friends. So it was only progressive weight gain and health problems over the years that made me think I had a problem with sugar. During two pregnancies, I ate anything I wanted as my doctor gave me no diet restrictions, nor paid attention to my weight gain. What I didn't know was that behind my enlarged abdomen was visceral fat on my organs, which enlarged the space required for them, making my abdomen push out. After pregnancy, despite multitudes of sit-ups, I couldn't figure out why my previous flat abdomen didn't return. Also, I never lost much pregnancy weight, continuing to slowly gain more and more pounds. Diet after diet failed me until I gave up trying. Then after a surgery that required me to lose 15 pounds to even have it, I lost 20 pounds by counting every calorie, eating no more than 1,200 calories a day. After surgery, seven more pounds came off by not eating but drinking for a week and not being allowed to eat wheat products for eight weeks. It was not until I learned that sugar and grains raise blood sugar immediately, causing visceral fat weight gain and health problems that I am now losing more pounds. To get off of sugary foods and drinks, concentrate on on healthy foods. Reduce fruit juice concentration with much water added. Buy 85% or above cacao and dark chocolate and only eat one large square a day. It is not addictive as it is only mildly sweet. Try recipes that use small amounts of honey. Check everything processed for sugar content and keep it low. Enjoy some fruit each day, especially berries, and eat lots of green vegetables. Eventually, you will lose your taste for sweet, super sweet as I have. You can do this. Some countries don't eat sweets at all. A little honey will do you. Be blessed in health and weight loss through weaning yourself off of sugar and needing the sweet taste. 
You will be blessed by being thinner and healthier. While I was receiving prophetic words from God that I have put on a YouTube site called Prophetic Words for the Hearts of God's People, suddenly I received a prophecy about how people are killing themselves with what and how they eat. This prophecy did not seem to fit with the others I had received, so I asked God what to do with it. The words I heard were this, start another YouTube series called Eating God's Way for Healing and Weight Loss. Interesting, because I had been delving into how I could lose weight and eat healthy. Therefore, I thought the prophecy might be for me alone. But no, the still small voice assured me it was for multitudes of his people. He said they are eating the wrong things plus too much of them and need to know when and how much to eat. God said to my spirit, do it, as my people are literally making themselves sick with their food choices and excess weight. Thus, I will share what God has shown me and what I have learned from my research. It will not be technical, as as I am not a scientist nor a doctor. When I ask him, God's Spirit told me I, to use the same venue as I'm using on another YouTube site. My own story of many body malfunctions and diseases God has shown were caused by what I ate. How much and how often will be shared here also. Several unnecessary surgeries could have been avoided had I known God's way to eat. Learn, enjoy, and be blessed. If you are spiritually hungry, you might want to check out my other YouTube site called Prophetic Words for the Hearts of God's People by Patricia Williams.